Hey everyone, this is Three Questions with Lady Rao. <laughs> you like that? Lady, awesome to have you on the podcast and just really great. One of my favorite things about doing this podcast is like, I always say this and I, I feel bad is like the off wax talk is actually um, just sitting and talking to people and getting to learn who they are. Cause I don't like just to kind of go into this cold. I want to like, you know, get a feel for the guests and you've done a lot of stuff with online learning, get a book out. Uh, it's like the evolving learners. I say that one, right? <laughs> you nailed it. I got nailed that it. one right. I know there's more to the title, but like, you know, look up Laney Rowell, right? Evolving learner. <laughs> exactly. And I know you've done a lot of education and just inspiring to talk to you. I, I really love the opportunity because it's the first time we've ever just got to sit down and chat. And thinking about just all of the work that you've done in education, at some point, I'm sure a teacher inspired you. So like, is there a teacher that, you know, sticks out in your mind that inspired you and what did they do that did that? So first of all, thank you for having me. This is such an honor. And I really, I really did have so much fun talking with you. It was awesome. I, yeah, it was great. It was really fun. Um, so it's really hard for me to pick one teacher. I will tell you that it, as a student, I was kind of the head down, um, quiet, like I didn't really want a lot of attention in school. So, mm -hmm. but I definitely had some teachers that, that I just could tell, they just loved teaching and learning and they loved kids. And that was when I knew like, those were like teachers who really made an impact, not just with me, but with others. So I don't know if there was one that stuck out so much, but it's just like, kind of this amalgam of like those who just were in it for the right reasons, mm -hmm. love what they did and always put kids first. Those were the ones who made the biggest impact to me. So when you say that, when you say you're like, you had, you know, your head down and you don't were shy. So like in that situation, cause I was the opposite, right? My head was up all the time and probably, you know, to the detriment of other students. So like in that situation, like I, it's weird because I, I always think of one, one student peer, uh, that was very smart. Uh, but there's, he would not say anything in class and he was, he actually became someone, a good friend of mine. So like when you are in that situation, I remember like, and you and I talk, we're around the same age. I used to like, sometimes kids, you know, in our generation used to get in trouble for not talking right? Like you get doc participation marks. So like, what did any, any teacher do that, you know, um, you know, helped you through that and, you know, recognize that about you and, and, and made, you know, and, and appreciated it. Well, I mean, I wouldn't say I was like so quiet to the point that I wasn't right. compliant. I was pretty much like, if you called on me, I'd answer. Right. If you needed me to do something, I would do it. And so, I mean, I think as a teacher, I almost kind of worry almost most about those kids because mm -hmm. they're the ones that sometimes don't get seen because they're, yeah. they're compliant enough, even though they're not engaged truly. And so, um, I, again, those teachers who just really saw kids for kids and put kids first, like I, I could, I could feel that I would probably give more to them than to others. Okay. You just, you just sparked something in me. You just sparked a story and it's like, I feel bad. You sparked it in me because it's going to make me look bad, but it was just something I'll never forget when I was a teacher. I remember I had a, a, student, a student in my class and she was very similar to what you're saying, right? You'd always ask her and, and stuff. And she, I remember her, she acted up one day and I was very bothered by it, right? And I'm like, what are you doing, blah, blah, blah. And this, good for her. She pulled me aside and said, Mr. Kroos, I don't do anything bad in this class. And the one time I do something, you get on my case. And then other kids do that and you're so used to it, you say nothing. I was like, mm -hmm. you're right, that <laughs> I am so sorry. And I, I, rem I, it changed, it's so like a, for students out there, you know, I'm sure students aren't a lot listening to this, but you know, I, I, it's so, I was so, like at the moment I was like, oh my God, that's like pretty accurate what you just said and thanks for calling me out. And I just think that's what one of the reasons we, really encourage student voices that helps us get better. And I don't know, like, I don't know if you have anything. I was, I, I feel bad. Like now I was like, Oh, George, but like, that's how you improve, right? You get that feedback. Exactly. And I think, you know, I'm a psychology major. I didn't go into, into college thinking I was going to be a teacher. 
teacher. I went in as a psych major and actually um, ended up working at a school with students with special needs. And that was what brought me to education. But in psychology, we learn about, you know, I was taught you're supposed if you want to change behavior, you're supposed to recognize six positives for every one negative. Right. Because a lot of times we're reinforcing the bad behavior because it's getting a lot of attention. Right. 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 And so that's just something we have to be really careful of. If, if there's something that we're trying to encourage kids to do to, to promote their own learning, I think we have to think about how are we reinforcing the good things they do, catching the even the smallest little thing that they do that's positive, that's really empowering them as a learner. Like we have to reinforce that as much as we can. And so kudos to that student, like I know. amazing, like the insight and then the courage to actually say it to you and call you out on it. Yeah. Um, by the way, I think we all have done that. So that's not, not that's anything against you. I think that's a bit of a human feel, nature thing. That, but, yeah. I'm going to play the, the sad sound. That's, <laughs> that's that sound for that one. Uh, I like feel embarrassed to say, it. but you know, what's interesting is that, um, she played basketball and I've stayed connected with her and she has children now. She congratulated me. So we've actually kept really close, but it was like, it was just weird that one moment. So I, yeah, I appreciate that. So I'm a little bit embarrassed and I don't know. Thanks for me. So that psychology, uh, class, you know, you brought me, got me like talking therapy. So I don't know if you picked up some tricks there when you're doing that. Anyways, enough about my bad teaching. So second question administrator right so you mm. work uh, you work with schools all over uh i yeah. i seen by the bio you've done you know work internationally obviously in the united states you told me you do a lot of work in, in california so when you look at all the administrators that you've encountered whether as a student or and um you know as an educator mm. who's like one person that really stuck out to you and why Oh, you got to say so one this time. I'm not letting you, I'm not letting you say yeah, okay, everybody. Okay. So I will say, I will say that the principal, um, when I was at the last school I was at, that principal was just a remarkable leader to me mm -hmm. because she was always very solution oriented, but she always kind of brought us in to help solve the problem. And I'll never forget one time I went to her and this was like, I was the only person on campus that was willing to try and tr troubleshoot the technology. That's kind of how I, you know, I was mm -hmm. the ed tech person. Right. And so I would help with, you know, okay, oh, I can anything, help update Anything with electricity. <laughs> anything with electricity. Anything with electricity. Go ask, ask Lainey. And so, um, so out of frustration, to, one day I just went into her office and I'm like, I, I can't do this anymore. I'm doing almost full two mm -hmm. full-time jobs. Right. I am a full-time teacher and I'm doing this. And she goes all right, what's your proposal? Mm -hmm. And I was like, what do you mean? And she's like, you can't, you don't come to me with a problem without at least having a thought about what you want to do to fix this. Like, I need your help with this. I don't have the answer. Right. And that, sh that was like a really important shift for me to have this leader say, I don't have all the answers. You have to help me with this. And she was really empowering me. And then I went back and I thought about it and I'm like, all right, well, here's what I need. This is what I need some release time to do this. I'm not ready to leave the classroom and I, I need some time to do this. And so we came up with a plan and it worked really, really well. So the best thing about, um, the best thing about that process is, and I think that's so important because we want our kids to be able to, you know, identify their problems, which you did, and then, you know, pose solutions. It doesn't mean that they're on their own. We work right. through that, but what that does is let's say, you get a new principal or you work with someone else the, that principal has instilled in you the ability to to solve some of your own problems. Do you know what I mean? And actually come with solutions so that, cause you know, I, I've heard of people having, you know, principals that wouldn't do that, wouldn't even like give you an option and you kind of got to figure it out on your own. So, Hey, what's the, can you, is it okay to name that person? Like, Oh yeah. That was Monique von Zebra. Okay. And so yeah. What's so. what's the name? Can you say shout out to that person? Because then they get the special. Yeah. They get the special. <laughs> well, she, she's, she's gotten married since then, so I'm I'm still using the name I know her by. Um, you gotta say it. So shout out to say. It. Shout out to Monique von Zebrock. <laughs> I know you have your own podcast. You gotta get one of these because it just. I'm you're, I'm really having soundboard envy right now. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the best. Okay. So last question, you know, um, your book evolving learner, uh, yeah. and I know that it's made an impact and a lot of people are interested in, you talk a lot about, you know, learning. 
So when you look at your own career, obviously you're a learner, right? You've evolved in education. So when you look back at your career and you look back at your first year, there's gotta be something that you're embarrassed by. Thankfully, I shared already something I was embarrassed by. It wasn't in my first year, unfortunately. So yeah. like we always learn, but like when you look back at your first year, what advice would you give yourself? So, you know, I, again, I was a psych major and I had to jump through a lot of hoops to become a teacher. I was walking into the sixth grade classroom and I was a psych major and I had all this, um, you know, I was just imposter syndrome. Like, oh my gosh, they're going to, these are like, they're going to know I'm not really supposed to be a teacher. Right. And so I really tried to put on this, um, I have all the answers and you know, we talk a lot in the book about learning from kids. And I wish that that first year Lainey had been more willing to learn with and from kids rather than trying to convince them I was worthy of being learned from. Mm -hmm. that, and that's, that's, I would actually say, like I often talk about things that I did wrong in my first year. One of the things that I know really made an impact was I would, I know this seems really ridiculous. I would play basketball with my students like literally every recess and that. it was just so good. It was at like every, sorry, every recess for the three months, there's not snow in Canada. Right. So like, <laughs> you're right. So yeah. like when it was snow, I was like, I'm out. So, but that, that to me, I think, you know, connecting and doing that because there's a lot of things that I didn't really understand uh, pedagogically with curriculum and I think that, I know this sounds weird, playing basketball with those kids probably saved me and kept me in the game because they were almost, uh, they are almost okay with me screwing up. They are almost okay with me not knowing everything because I built that relationship with them and something I always think about. So that, um, I, I, I love that sometimes. So like, I want to share one good thing I've done. <laughs> Maybe that's why I brought it up. You're very good about being vulnerable and sharing things, which we all make lots of mistakes. So yeah. kudos to you for sharing them. I know. All right. Hey, Lainey, Lainey Rao, right? Yes. Thank you so much. Uh, hey, and anyone listening, Lainey's got her own uh, podcast with a mutual friend, Brianna Hodges, and uh, it's called Lemonade Learning and also has a book, The Evolving Learner. So check it out because it is awesome. I have, just so I you know, I have a that. million sounds on this board, but the air horn is my favorite. I, it's maybe because of the basketball thing, but Lainey, thanks for, so much for being on. And everyone, thanks for taking the time to listen. <laughs> Got music. Have a wonderful day. <laughs>